is an interesting company. It is a bit like your ex that you have dumped five, ten years ago because they were not good looking enough, they were a bit boring and quite frankly, nothing special. And one day comes, you see them on the street, you turn your head and you say, damn, and you think to yourself, hmm, should I have waited a little bit longer? Well, the bad news, your ex is just that, most likely your ex. But the good news, you can still buy yourself a Kia. Now, the new Nero, just like the new Sportage, has grown in both size and price. It starts from just under 30,000 pounds in the UK. It looks smart, it looks elegant, and much better to the previous generation. In fact, it's a whole different story. But shall we judge a book by its cover? Not so fast. Let the rubber hit the road. One, two, two three. just how quick I can be. Let's launch it. Spot might activate it. Automatic hold is deactivated. Right. Foot on the brake. Foot on the throttle. Let's warm you up a bit. Off we go. Come on Kia. It is now time to hustle. So the declared 0 to 100 is 10.4 seconds and I am 9.63. Not bad. Top speed is 165 kilometers an hour. Actually quite positively surprised with this gearbox. It seems to be away. When it comes to engine choices, there's plenty to select from. There's hybrid, there's plug-in hybrid, and there is full electric. Now, this is HEV, which is a terminology for a traditional hybrid, because we've got a small electric motor here and a 1.6 liter turbocharged petrol engine. The total power, 141 horses and 265 newton meters of torque. The power is being sent to the front wheels and everything is being operated by a six-speed automatic gearbox. And that's enough about the numbers under the bonnet. This car is comfy to drive and smooth over bumps. When you trot around town or you drive anywhere else at lower speeds, you will most likely be using just an electric motor. So it is quiet and peaceful. Then you hop on the motorway, you pick up some speed, and the combustion engine kicks in. But because the engine is, generally speaking, well mannered, the switch between the engine and the electric motor is seamless. It is a rather crucial comfort element, yet often overlooked when purchasing a hybrid car. Just a food for thought. Now, this is a brilliant long distance cruiser. Very little tire noise, very little wind noise, and it is cheap as chips to run. I've been averaging about five liters, bugger all, which is why I love hybrid cars. Whilst some still insist that hybrid cars try to be the jack of all trades and they are in fact a master of none. Really? Of course, it all depends how you drive and where you drive, but hybrid cars can give you such a great deal of flexibility and some good savings. And who doesn't like that? Saving time and money. I certainly do. On a twisty road, it handles the corners well. And here, the physics come into place, really, because we're sitting slightly lower than an SUV. So there's very little body lean, we've got a solid group, and we can feel what is happening with this car at all points in time. The steering is nice and light. It's easy to maneuver this car in and out of car parks. We've got good all-round visibility, pretty big rear window, decent cameras, now, speaking of heights, I see Nero as a blend between an SUV and a crossover. And this is actually more practical than a tall SUV to get in and get out. Unless, of course, the tall SUV has got the option to lower when you hop in and hop out. But that's usually applicable to only upmarket SUVs. Now, think baby seats, elderly, it's just a little bit more convenient. <laughs> Backseat 
is actually okay. I've got plenty of room for my knees, very good headroom. The seats here are heated, metal seat. It's actually all right. You do have a small hump here, but the hump is big enough to comfortably fit your feet. So you can actually put a slim adult here. You also have two USB-C ports. Kia has nailed the back seat. Right, let's check the boot space. Take your time. We have 451 liters in the traditional hybrid, which is actually a little bit less than in the plug-in hybrid or the electric version, just the way the batteries have been fit. But the shape of the boot is nice and square, very practical. Of course, you can fold the back seats down and that's enough about the boot space. Gray exterior paint color on this car looks a little bit sad. I would definitely go for something brighter, red, blue, green. There's also the dual coloring option. So together with black panels, that looks quite smart. But actually, I don't understand why Kia doesn't offer even brighter colors, almost neon. Imagine yellow, light blue, light green. On such a youthful car, these bright colors would look so funky. And I reckon it would widen this car's audience, but anyway, that's just me being the car expert that I'm not. On to the cabin, which is sleek, modern, with plenty of soft materials. The quality of the finish is very good. Quick practicality check, large bottle of water test. Can you fit that in the door bin? No, you cannot, nothing bulky will go without a fight, but you can pop up all the down here, very good. And these cap holders are actually lockable, that's handy. Your drinks don't travel. In terms of storage space, there's plenty to keep all your clutter. Neat shelf for wireless mobile charging. It's all rubber, so it doesn't slide. 12 volt socket, USB port, USB-C port, very good. I do like this panel down here with physical buttons for your seat heating, seat cooling, which I have activated because it is scorching at the moment. Steering wheel heating, very good. Quick access to cameras as well. Let's have a look at you, pretty good. These are, I like the steering wheel. Kia has really <laughs> cleaned up in terms of design. Nice logo. You've got the button to change your driving modes. In terms of shortcut buttons, clean and simple layer. I like it. You've got the paddle shifters, but not to change your gears, but to actually adjust the intensity of your region. Very handy. All right, onto this beautiful touch screen. So the system itself is easy, straightforward, pretty intuitive as well. Let's have a look at the graphics, click onto map. It responds fairly quickly to the touch of your finger. Okay, there you go. You can of course plug in your iPhone or your Android if you don't like it, but I actually personally like it. It's simple, it gives you everything that you need. Now to control it, you use your, your fingers, but you also have the panel down here so these are touch buttons, touch control buttons, but this is very clever because you can just, you see you've got this, currently you've got the map, navigation shortcuts, all the shortcuts that you need, and you just flick it to climate control. So you don't have to go s slide and touch and slide and not know what you're doing. Now here you actually have a physical button for your climate control, and then you just flick it, and this is your volume control, boom. It's just so clever. I don't understand why more manufacturers didn't didn't do it anyway. Maybe didn't want to have big copycats, but overall the cabin is just so lovely. It is elegant, a little bit sporty. I probably would go for different coloring, but that's just me. But Kia has done a wonderful job. <music> Time to check the throttle response. I'm going to floor it. I mean, it's not what you call it wildly punchy, but it's enough to take over an idiot. Let's see if Meta's improved in a spot mode. For Dan, it's a bit more vigorous. But there's little difference between these two driving modes. Now, speaking of driving modes, there's just two. There's Eco and Sport. But if you think about it, in a car of this nature, do you really need more? Probably not. Now the six-speed automatic gearbox is, generally speaking, quick and clever. But then when you rev it hard, all of a sudden, 
it starts to ponder, wonder, hesitates. Whilst it's holding on to a lower gear, you hear this drowning sound. And then it upshifts. Hallelujah! Moral of the stories, it's not a car for revving hard, where speed is just everything. It's a car for relaxed and chilled driving. So the previous Nero was an okay-ish car. Nothing special, yet another Korean car. Boy oh boy, how the tables have turned. Because this swan has flourished in such a wonderful way. Just like other Kia models, they have become so stylish. Now the new Nero is a bit like your ex who wants to get back together, but actually has done some homework. Finally got his shit together, cleaned up, became a bit smarter, a bit trendier, so that together you can show up in public and actually stand out. I really like this car. Really like what you get for your money with Kia. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!